Lactic acid is a biomarker that we commonly use in the ICU, and it's really useful in patients who come in in septic shock, but you can see a rise in lactic acid with really any patient who's in shock, whether it's hypovolemia or cardiogenic shock. But basically, the most common use for lactic acid levels is for when we're presuming that someone has global hypoperfusion. So when we break down the word global hyperperfusion, what we're saying is that globally, meaning all throughout the body, you're having a lack of perfusion or hypoperfusion, meaning that blood flow is not getting to certain parts of your body. And without blood flow getting to parts of your body, that means oxygen is not getting to parts of your body. Without oxygen in your tissues and in your cell, you basically have what we call anaerobic oxidative uh, metabolism, meaning that the mitochondria in your cells don't have oxygen uh, in order to produce ATP. So without oxygen, your cells basically go into anaerobic glycolysis, which creates pyruvate, and then pyruvate turns into lactic acid. For anyone who works out or exercises, uh, you've probably heard that lactic acid builds up when you're exercising really hard, and that this can lead to sore muscles. Similar principle applies here. However, when you have very septic patients who come in very sick and they have elevated lactate levels, these patients already have an associated increased mortality when they get to your ICU. Now, for patients who come in in severe septic shock, the treatment algorithm is relatively straightforward. First thing you want to do is initiate broad-spectrum antibiotics. Next thing you want to do is give them a fluid bolus. Most uh, treatment algorithms will tell you to do 30 cc's per kilo within the first uh, three hours, although that's sort of been a moving target with surviving sepsis campaigns. Uh, the next thing you want to do is use vasopressors to target a mean arterial pressure of 65. So you'll use levofed as well as vasopressin to increase that blood pressure. And the last part of it is making sure you have source control. So if the infection is somewhere within the body that may need surgical intervention, you want to make sure that that patient can have that intervention to ultimately uh, remove that infectious source. Lactic acid is mostly produced in muscle, skin, and the brain. But when you have patients who have ARDS from sepsis, there's also a huge contributor of lactic acid that comes from the lungs itself. Now, this is all type A lactic acidosis, we have global hypoperfusion. Now there's something called type B lactic acidosis so where you don't have global hypoperfusion, but you still have an elevated uh, lactate level. These usually don't have as much of an increase in mortality rate as uh, type A lactic acidosis. However, if you have both of them combined, you can still drive down someone's pH level. So some of the causes that can cause type B lactic acidosis are medications. Uh, some of the ones that come to mind are isoniazide, metformin, uh, antiviral medication. Another cause could be elevated levels of epinephrine floating around through your body, and that can either be endogenous from if someone just had a trauma um, or if they have a theochromocytoma where they have uh, basically a tumor that's secreting epinephrine, or it can be exogenous from us delivering epinephrine to support someone's cardiac function. And lastly, you can see a decrease in lactate clearance. Most patients who are critically ill have some degree of liver or hepatic dysfunction, and the liver is involved in about 70% of the metabolism of lactate. So if someone's liver takes a hit, they may be de decreasing the amount of lactate uh, metabolism that they're able to do. Now, other than correcting the tissue perfusion and removing any things that could be causing type B lactic acidosis, if the lactic acidosis gets so profound and so bad that it's causing uh, hemodynamic effects over and over again without any sort of resolution. The definitive treatment that you may have to do is hemodialysis to remove that lactic acidosis from circulation in that patient. And in terms of monitoring lactate levels, we'll obviously initially get a baseline level to see how sick that patient is. And then over the course of that first day of admission, we'll get serial levels to see if this patient is getting sicker or if they're getting better based on whether their lactate level going up or down.